coming to a theater this summer. He's been identified on the metro. It's not enough time to fix the hyperdrive, is there? Hey, don't do this. Hey guys, so that's not actually a real movie, but that'd be pretty cool if it was, though. Anyways, let's get down to it. So this is the new Mac Studio. It's Apple's newest desktop offering, and it's a bit of a curious one, but we'll touch on that later. So first impressions. The packaging is super nice. I know it's stupid to care about this, but Apple has really been nailing the packaging lately, and it really makes a good first impression. In the box, all you get is the unit itself and a braided power cord. So you'll need to provide your own HDMI or Thunderbolt cable to connect to your monitor. For the price, they probably could have included one of those, but what do I know? The unit itself is heavy, almost 6 pounds to be exact, which is kind of surprising given its compact form factor. And that's just for the base unit. The upgraded version weighs in at nearly 8 pounds. The physical footprint is the same as the M1 Mac Mini, but it's about 2.5 times as tall, and Apple used that extra real estate to load in two really big fans. The air intake is actually on the bottom of the unit, through these perforated holes. These worry me a little bit more about dust than the Mac Mini, but it's probably not a big deal. Speaking of the large cooling fans, you can definitely hear them right when you start up the unit. Coming from the virtually silent Mac Mini, it's a little disappointing, but I will say that they never ramped up to really high levels like my Windows laptops or even the latest 14-inch MacBook Pro, no matter what I threw at it. But you still can hear them a little bit. Now I opted for the base model Mac Studio, and that's what most people will probably go for, so let's run through the specs really quickly. The base model comes with the M1 Max chip, which is the same that was previously available as an upgrade in the latest MacBook Pro laptops. It's a beast of a chip, but it's pretty well known commodity at this point, so I won't go too in depth on it. Base RAM starts at 32 gigabytes and can be configured up to 64 gigabytes, and base storage starts at 512 gigabytes, which can be upgraded to 8 terabytes for an eye-watering $2,100 extra. As I said in my Mac Mini long-term review, don't pay for Apple's crazy storage prices. Get you a good base level of storage that you're comfortable with, then upgrade if needed with a speedy external NVMe SSD. I'll link the one I use in the description. The ports get an upgrade compared to the Mac Mini, starting with four Thunderbolt 4 ports on the back. There's also a 10 gigabit Ethernet port, two USB-A ports, a 2.0 HDMI port, and a high impedance 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This is a great selection and should be enough for most people, but a dongle can easily be added if more ports are needed. Those are pretty cheap these days. Now the ports that have really been the most helpful for me so far have been the new front I.O. The base model I have has two USB-C ports and an SD card reader. While the upgraded Mac Studio swaps out those USB-C ports for Thunderbolt ports, these have been plenty fast transferring files from my external drive, and I really like having the easily accessible SD card port. It's kind of stupid, but I like not having to use the extra dongle that I had to use before for the SD card reader. Yeah. Believe it or not, front ports are kind of rare on Apple devices, and these have been a really good addition for ease of use. The Mac Studio also has a small built-in speaker like the Mac Mini, and it's slightly better than the Mac Mini, but not something you're going to want to watch movies on or listen to music. It's just there if you need it in a pinch. Even the cheapest pair of desktop speakers are going to outperform this. But all in all, it's better than nothing. Oh, they also made the status light on the front bigger for some reason. I'm not sure why they did that, but I thought it was kind of funny. Performance has been stellar for my use case. Like every other YouTuber, I've been using this for editing in Final Cut Pro, watching YouTube, word processing, and dabbling in Photoshop. As I said earlier, the M1 Max chip has been around for a bit, so most people are probably more familiar with it than the M1 Ultra chip in the pricier Mac Studio. But if you're not familiar with it, here's a few comparisons to the regular M1 chip in the Mac Mini. I exported the same clip on my Mac Mini and on the Mac Studio, and here's what I got. I also didn't really notice any of the small hiccups that you occasionally get on the M1 and Final Cut Pro when rendering difficult plugins. These are pretty rare, but they still happen from time to time with different intro animations that I use and things like that. Now I got a lot of questions in my M1 Mac Mini video about other use cases besides video editing and what it can handle. While I can't speak to everything that these systems can handle, as I haven't tried every program, video editing is typically more demanding than 2D CAD work, music engineering, and things like that, so odds are that it probably can handle what you're wanting to do. The bigger question to look for would be if the program you're wanting to use is compatible with Mac, and if it's not, will it run through Apple's Rosetta emulation program? All that aside, the bottom line is this is still one of the strongest small desktop computers on the market. So let's wrap it up. At the start of the video, I mentioned that this was kind of a weird offering from Apple. The reason that I say that is this isn't really a computer that anyone was asking for. By and large, I think most people were hoping for a new upgraded Mac Mini with a stronger chip like the rumored M2 while keeping that low asking price. But instead, what we got was a base level $2,000 machine that, while super strong, wasn't necessarily needed. 
Now, I'm not saying in any way that this is a bad computer. I'm absolutely planning on keeping this and getting rid of my Mac Mini just because I love having the latest and greatest, and I love the small upgrades like the front ports and the upgraded chipset. And this thing is a beast. I have no doubt it's going to be more than enough to meet my needs for a long time. But it is probably performance overkill for the majority of users out there. It is for myself, and I still like it. And it's definitely a premium product given the starting price, and that's without any upgrades. If you're like me and want the top of the line performance, this thing is excellent. But if you're in the other group, odds are we still get an upgraded Mac Mini at some point this year, if not early next year. Anyways, that's all I've got for today. I really appreciate you watching, and if you enjoyed it, maybe consider subscribing. Until next time.